My ex ghosted me. What am I supposed to do about it? And what might be some actual real reasons why your ex might seemingly ghost you? That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. But first, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not because you deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. And if you agree with me, please help me out by helping this channel grow. All you have to do is hit that thumbs up button for this channel and that kind of sends a little message to the YouTube algorithm that says, hey, this is a video that people like. Let's, you know, show it to more people in their recommended videos and their search results and all that. Um, and, you know, it might help pay it forward. You know, someone out there might be going through something tough and they might need to see what we might end up talking about in this video. So please help me out. Also, uh, we do have a course called Connect and Commit. It does tell you how to respond when your ex is ghosting you, um, but more on that in the description box below. It does cover seven specific situations, so you know, don't sign up if you don't match one of those seven situations. But one of them is when your ex just you know stops responding to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. Now, oftentimes people kind of prematurely assume that their ex is ghosting them. It's not that their ex is necessarily ghosting them, it's just that there's not a whole lot to go on in terms of interactions, okay? So basically, if you look at how a lot of people are texting, and I have been guilty of this myself in the past as well too, um, oftentimes a lot of people are texting in a non-engaging sort of way. Um, that is to say, they're just sending things like, hey, what's up? how are you doing? Things like that. Um, and th th these are not particularly engaging questions. Uh, they're not particularly effective for a couple different reasons. First of all, there's not a whole lot going on on your part. It's just like a couple words, hey, what's up? So there's not a lot of vulnerability on your part, which means you're kind of expecting your ex to take the first move in opening up and engaging with you and being vulnerable. And that's a, that's a big ask for a lot of people to actually have a... Um, to actually have them make the first move before you make the first move. A lot of times people are um, hesitant about making that first move in terms of opening up and being vulnerable because they don't know where you're at. They don't know if you just want the stock answer of, you know, how are you? Oh, I'm good, thanks. Um, or if they really want, or if you really want to know how they're doing it, it's like, well, no, how, how are you actually doing? And it's like, oh, well, I'm actually having a really rough day and this thing happened and that other thing happened and then all, like... The last thing they want is to open up and share a lot about what's going on with them and for you to just say, cool, you know, I, I, that's, that's a lot. I just wanted to tick the box and for you to say, I'm fine, thanks, or whatever. And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of times people will have um, a hesitancy opening up, especially to generic, non-vulnerable, non-specific questions like that. Um, another reason, this is more big picture, is that your ex and you are most likely, depending on kind of how your breakup happened and what's been going on, um, you're most likely still trying to figure out how you fit into each other's lives. You know, there's the fact that the two of you used to be in a relationship, you're not in a relationship anymore. Um, what does this mean? You're, you know, you may have talked about like being friends or staying in love, staying, you know, staying in each other's lives or like loving each other, but not being in love with one another or something like that. But um, what does that actually mean on a practical day to day basis? Your ex may not know. Oftentimes your ex doesn't know. Um, you know, even if you do something like actually have what we would call the same team conversation with your ex, they might agree to it, it might sound nice, but when it comes to actual practical day-to-day -day implementation of it, they may not know what that looks like and how they're supposed to interact with you. And so they're kind of like looking for you to do that. So if you do these, you know, super low investment things like, what's up? How are you? Did you have a good day? something like that, they're not going to know exactly how to respond. Like, do do I tell you how, I, how I'm doing? Is that like me stepping over some sort of line, going too far, um, you know, being a little bit too close to you? Maybe I should hold myself back. They don't know. So what you're going to probably have to do is to lead by example. You know, demonstrate to them that uh, this is what I'd like our interactions to look like. This is what I'd like things to be like moving forward from here. And so you're going to have to give them a compelling vision about 
you know, obviously the big things, like how the two of you are going to interact and fit into each other's lives, but also in, in, in smaller ways as well, too. Like, what does it actually look like in a practical day-to-day -day basis? Like, how are the two of you going to be communicating? Is it going to be, you know, the two of you are, like, agreeing to be friends, but you're not really friends, and you're just like, so, okay, it's how I'm going to let you down easy, and we're just never going to talk to each other again. We're just going to, like, skim across the surface and not talk about anything substantial, just talk about, you know, current events and people, places, and things, and stuff like that? Or are you going to like actually be able to talk about deeper emotional things like that? You're going to have to probably lead the way and demonstrate to them um, how that you could see the two of them interacting, and then you know invite them to come on that journey with you. Um, if your ex doesn't respond, and you're sending these you know generic short things, it could be they don't know how to respond. They don't know what they should respond um, to what would be a proper way to respond, how they should respond given, you know, how you have agreed or not agreed to fit into each other's lives. Um, they, 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 they may not be engaged by that question, you know, honestly, it's kind of a dull question. How are you? What's new? What's up? You know, try to being a little bit more specific, a little bit more vivid, a little bit more uh, targeted so that they can actually tell, oh, this is a real question that you're asking because you thought about something, or this is based off of something that you actually experienced that, you know, you were just going through your day-to-day -day life, something popped up that reminded um, you of me or some memory that we had together, and that's why you reached out. But it's it has to stick out so they know that it's a genuine, heartfelt, authentic thing. You know, even if you mean something like, how are you, or what's going on, or something like that, um, those phrases are just so overused in our society, at least here in North America, that um, most people just kind of like don't know if it's genuine or not. You know, you're making small talk with people uh, throughout your day, or, you know, at least we were before 2020 and everything that happened in 2020. But, um, you know, you're making small talk with people throughout your day, and, you know, clerks at the store are just like, oh, how are you? And you're like, okay, fine. And you're like, oh, how are you doing? And they, they like, don't even stop to answer because they're, like, off doing another thing or something. Like, people, people just take these phrases as forgettable fluff. And so it's not necessarily that your ex is ghosting you per se in many cases. It's that they just uh, don't know that you genuinely want to connect with them. They don't know how to connect with you. They don't know how the two of you fit into each other's lives. They don't know what that means in like a practical day-to-day -day sort of interaction sense. They don't know um, what the compelling vision that they or you or together both of you might have for what your interactions might look like. And so they're gonna do what a lot of people do, which is to hold back, be conservative, you know, underplay their hand. And in a lot of cases, if you're investing super low, they might try to invest lower than that, which in a lot of cases might just look like ghosting, not responding, not engaging, okay? Um, and another thing is oftentimes people will kind of like wait for their ex to make the first move. There's this uh, belief out there that people have that like, well, you broke up with me, therefore you should be the first one that makes the move. And if they don't, then sometimes people think, oh, well, they're ghosting me. It's not that they're necessarily ghosting you. It's just that, again, they don't know how the two of you fit into each other's lives. They don't have a compelling vision for what that might look like. And again, you have to take the lead and demonstrate that to them. Okay. Um, yes, it would be nice. It would be ideal if they reached out to you first because they broke up with you. But again, I'm here to talk about what's actually happening and what we can do in a practical, real sense, not about some philosophical ideas of, you know, it would be really nice if they just made the first move. It would be really nice if the man did all the work. It'd be really nice if the woman did all the work. It'd be really nice if everyone else did all the work and you could just kind of sit back in your comfort zone and have everything work out. That's not what my role is. My role is to say, okay, that might be nice, but let's get real about what's happening. And if it's not happening, then we need to shift something, change our strategy, and do something moving forward. Now, of course, there's also legitimate times when your ex is ghosting you. You know, you're taking questions, you're asking questions, you're bringing up specific things, and they're not responding to you. That is an entirely different situation altogether. Um, and, you know, that is something that we do mention inside of Connect and Commit. Again, the link for that is in the description box below. But 
oftentimes when someone's ex is, you know, ghosting them, it's not that they're really ghosting them. It's just that they don't know how to interact with you. They don't know how to respond to you or they don't have a clear vision on how the two of you could fit into each other's lives. And so you want to start by looking at that first and foremost. Anyway, I hope this has helped you out. Once again, if you do like what we're doing, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out, uh, helps this channel grow. And if you want to learn more about texting your ex, we do have a video series over here on the topic of texting your ex. Um, or you might want to check out this video right here. But once again, my name is Clay. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.